Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 30 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the next question that comes to your mind is what causes recombinations? Now in recombination, crossing over plays a very important role. Now while we were just going through the meiosis, we used the term crossing over, right? Which happens during prophase 1. What happens there? Actually, two homologous chromosomes, they pair up and they exchange some of their parts with each other. So that is what that happens during crossing over and because of that, new combinations or recombinations are formed. So now what we'll see, we'll quickly look at what is crossing over and how crossing over results in recombination. So let us quickly talk about crossing over. So now let us see what exactly happens during crossing over. Now we all know that genes are the carriers of inheritance and where are the genes located? Genes are located on the chromosomes, right? Now when cell division happens, like when meiosis happens, what undergoes a change? Chromosomes undergo a change. Now when chromosomes undergo a change, the genetic material also changes. So basically during crossing over what happens is there is physical exchange of parts between the non-sister chromatids of a pair of homologous chromosomes during meiosis and this process is known as crossing over. So let us suppose inside a cell you have two homologous chromosomes. So here red and green they represent a pair of homologous chromosomes right. So this means that you have genes located on these chromosomes and you have the corresponding genes same sequence of genes located on the other chromosome as well. So that is how the common arrangement is. Now what happens during the process of meiosis in my, during prophase 1, chiasmata formation take place and what is that? If you see the homologous chromosome they start pairing up. So they start to pair up and these are the sites of crossing over. So these are the sites where actual crossing over take place. So if you see this side and this side and this x-shaped structure which you see here this x-shaped structure is known as chiasmata so crossing over occurs at the chiasmata region so the x-shaped structure which you see that is known as chiasmata now we have discussed about all these things in detail when we spoke about meiosis anyways we'll talk about it now so these are the regions where uh, exact physical exchange will take place now, please remember that this crossing over takes place only between the non-sister chromatids. So here if you see, these two are the sister chromatids of each other, right? Similarly, the green ones are sister chromatids of each other. But this type of exchange takes place between the non-sister chromatids. So these two are the non-sister chromatids. So that is why the exchange takes place between these two. Now once the exchange is done, what happens? They again get separated. But if you see that some of the part got exchanged. Now this part also contains the gene. Now when this exchange takes place, that means the genes which were present on the chromosome that also got exchanged. Now when you have some different genes here and the genes which were present here, so there will be some blending of the genes as well. Now because of this crossing over, the recombinations take place. Now. Depending on how much crossing over has take place, the frequency of recombinations will depend. Now, if very little crossing over has taken place, then very less number of recombinations will be formed. Now, due to crossing over, it was observed that 50% were parental type, whereas 50% were recombinant type in case of so the unlinked genes also. So in case of unlinked genes also, we see a lot of recombinations. So those recombinations happen because of crossing over only. Now how much recombination will happen? That depends on how much crossing over will take place. And how much crossing over will take place? That depends on the linkage between the two genes. So if the genes are very much linked to each other, then less crossing over will take place. But if the genes are not that much linked, then more crossing over will take place. So crossing over between two linked genes. Now let us see how crossing over takes place between two linked. So here we will see how exactly crossing over takes place between two linked genes. Now let us suppose these are the two homologous chromosomes. So this represents the two chromosomes here on the screen represent a pair of homologous chromosomes. Now let us suppose on this chromosome we consider two genes. 
For example, this is gene A and this is gene B and their corresponding counterparts are present here like A and B. So now, what are the possible ways, I mean, what will happen during the process of meiosis? So what are the gametes that can be formed? So this can actually form, there are just two options, right? This can form and that is again the same thing, AB, right? During meiosis, what happens? The chromosomes replicate and that is how sister chromatids are formed, right? So here, if you see, these two are homologous chromosomes, right? Here and here in this case, this one and this one, these two represent the sister chromatids. Now, similarly, this chromosome will also replicate, or I mean duplicate and it will form the two sister chromatids. So again, here, this will be AB and here again, this is going to be AB. So this is how the sister chromatids are formed and this sister chromatid formation takes place during the synthesis phase of interphase. Okay. So now the sister chromatids are also formed. Now, what will happen during prophase 1? Now the non-sister chromatids, so which one is the non-sister chromatid? This one and this one. So these are the non-sister chromatids and crossing over or pairing up will take place between these two. So if you see, the outer chromatids will remain the same, but the inner non-sister chromatids, they will just cross over each other. And this is known as chiasmata formation. So you see an egg-shaped -shape structure is formed due to the overlap of the non-sister chromatids and this is called chiasmata. So this is how the overlap will take place and after the overlap what is happening? Some portion of the uh, chromosome is getting exchanged and as a result of these, these four chromatids will be formed. So if you see the, um, um, the gene got exchanged, so here you still have AB because this was always having AB, it never had interaction with anybody else. But in this case, earlier you had capital A, capital B. But now what do you have? You have capital A but small b. Similarly, here you have small a but capital B. So here by mistake I wrote capital B. So here you have capital A, small b and here you have small a, capital B. And here as usual you have small a and small b. So this is how crossing over takes place. So now, if there is no crossing over, now if we assume that, so even if we assume that A and B are always going to be together and A or A and B are always going to be together, that means that they are going to be inherited together, right? That is the only thing which we mean to say, that they are going to be inherited together. So now, the first case is, we consider case 1 where we say that A and B are linked. Again, A and B are also linked. So in that case, what will happen? They will always get inherited together. So in that case, these are the gametes which will get formed. I mean, it will not get into this stage if they are completely linked. So if they are completely linked, there will be only parental combination and there will be no recombination because there will be no crossing over. So if they are completely linked, if they are linked completely, then there will be no crossing over. And if there is no crossing over, what are the gametes that will be formed? The only possible gametes that will be formed are AB and AB. But if we consider case 2 where a and B are either incompletely linked or they are not linked. In that case, these recombinations will also be formed as is shown in this figure, right? So if it is incompletely linked or if it is not linked, incompletely or unlinked. So in that, that case, recombinations will be formed. And what are the various recombinations that are possible? They will be AB, AB, AB and A. So these are the possible gametes in that case. So this is how crossing over takes place and this is how crossing over gives rise to recombinants. So now the question is what are the scenarios? Now we got to know that okay if the genes are completely linked in that case there will be no recombination only parental traits will be seen. So that is clear but if the genes are unlinked in that case 
we see as per mendelian laws of inheritance that is the principle of independent assortment we saw that 50% of the uh, offsprings will be recombinants and 50% of the offsprings will be parental that is what as per uh, mendel but we also saw some of the experiments where we saw that the percentage of recombinants is very less and the percentage of parental types are very high so this independent assortment of genes giving 50% recombinants is possible only under two cases so the first case is when the genes are unlinked that is the genes are present on different chromosomes now when the genes are present on different chromosomes they are no way linked to each other right so they can completely independently assort themselves and as a result 50% of the uh, offsprings will be recombinants and 50% will be parental so this will be in accordance with the principle of independent assortment given by mendel now the other scenario where this will be true is if the genes are present on the same chromosome but they are far apart now if the genes are very far apart then what happens the probability of crossing over becomes more because you just now saw right that how crossing over takes place it takes place with the neighboring non sister chromatid so if two genes are present very near to each other then there is very less possibility that crossing over will take place so in that case both the genes will get inherited together but if the two genes are located very far away from each other in that case crossing over can take place and therefore recombination can occur so the mendel's in the principle of independent assortment holds true only when the genes are present on different chromosomes or the genes are present on the same chromosome but they are far apart but if the genes are very close to each other there is a linkage between the genes in that case the mendel's principle of independent assortment doesn't hold true now how do we know that how many times or how many times the crossing over has taken place so that can be determined cytologically by counting the number of chiasmata because every time a chiasmata formation takes place there is a crossing over because chiasmata is nothing but the x shaped structure which is formed through which physical exchange takes place between the two non sister chromatids so now with this discussion we reach to another concept of complete and incomplete linkage so there is one concept where complete linkage is there so there will be no recombination there is another com concept where incomplete linkage is there where the possibilities of recombinations keep on increasing thank you please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again